We're here to bring real solutions to real problems affecting real people today. With your support, you can join us in becoming part of the solution and a part of this movement. Today, we're introducing a new project with the University of Rochester. Uh, you might know what a reacher or a grabber or a picker-upper is. There are many different kinds. Uh, if you have the um, good use of your arms, they're, they're very handy. I like this brand. It comes out of the contractor world. And um, I like it because of this. Right? This grippy handle means that whatever weight you're picking up actually adds to your grip strength. Um, there are two kinds that you can find if you search for Nifty Nabber by Unger on Amazon.com. Uh, they usually run about 30 bucks or so. Um, lengths of 18, 32, and 72 inches are available. Um, look for the ones with the black handle. Ones with the black handle have rivets instead of nuts and bolts. And they have a softer grippy end, which makes it easier to grip items. Um, and I just like them better. Uh, but this comes out of the contractor world, which is why it works well. Uh, you know, often when we see products made for disability issues or solutions, they're actually not made very well. Um, but the real problem is when you can't use your arms, my condition causes uh, brittle bones and sometimes I have a broken arm and then I can't use these. Then what do I do? So we proposed the problem of how do you get something from a high shelf or off the floor or across a large table if you don't have the uh, adequate use of your arms to a student team at the University of Rochester. And they spent their first semester developing their concept and their pitch. And uh, in the coming semester, they will uh, develop a prototype uh, from which uh, if it's not you know a complete prototype that's actionable, we can take it from there and create an actionable prototype. But here's their presentation. Well, hi everyone, we are the Open Hardware uh, Reach Mechanism team and we will be presenting um, with our customer, Thomas Queter, who's the president and founder of the Mobility Independence Foundation. Before we get started, we'd like to introduce ourselves. So I'm Charlotte, I'm concentrating in optics. Hi, Alex, my concentration is in signals and systems. I'm Edward, my concentration is in biomechanics. And I'm Kira, my concentration is also in signals. So to get started on our project, we conducted some background research. Uh, it revealed two main types of assistive reach devices that people with um, in wheelchairs might use. So the first one is the manual reach or grabber device, which is um, a device that is inclined to uh, reach objects that are far away and bring it closer to the user. This is a very low cost option, but obviously lacks a lot of the, lacks a lot of the precision and control needed to complete a lot of tasks around the home. So the other option is a wheelchair mounted robotic arm, which can complete more tasks, but is um, more expensive, difficult to get and hard to modify um, based on the needs of the individual. So between these two um, extremes, there exists a gap, which we hope to fill with our design. And we hope to fill that with the use of open hardware. So open hardware refers to any physical device whose design is made publicly available in order to um, alter based on the needs of individuals. Um, so with this open hardware, we hope to make a device that is more um, accessible, um, affordable, and customizable based on the needs of wheelchair individuals. So as I mentioned, oh, as I mentioned earlier, we are working in collaboration with the Mobility Independence Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that aims to assist um, individuals with mobility challenges, and they're doing this using open source and customizable um, medical equipment. So the MIF, uh, they're um, gonna directly impact our design approach. So as we said, there's the open source hardware requirement, which will allow our device to be more um, affordable and accessible for a variety of wheelchair users. Potential customers. So because this device is open hardware, we've considered multiple categories of customers who could benefit from a device like this. First, we've considered someone who may have something like quadriplegia, which means that they would have no upper limb mobility. This would impact the user interface of the device. So users like this could use the device using something like a sip and puff interface, which me measures the amount of air someone sips or puffs to control the movement of the device. Or they could use something like a retinal tracking sensor. 
Then there's also customers like our main customer, Thomas Queter. He has brittle bone disease, which means he has limited upper limb mobility, and he could control the device using something like a joystick, a set of buttons, or a controller of some sort. And then there's also customers who could have neuromuscular diseases, such as spinal muscular atrophy. This is characterized by muscle weakness, so we would have to take that into consideration, as well as an interface that would work for someone who has muscle tremors. To focus and prioritize the needs and wants or the overall requirements for our device, we have focused on those that would benefit Thomas the most. So first, our device needs to hold and grab objects that range from about 0.1 to 40 newtons in weight. This would encompass a large range of everyday objects, as small as a toothbrush to a heavier gallon of water. The device also needs to be safe, so when reaching and grabbing these heavier objects, the center of mass of the wheelchair does not should not shift dramatically, and the reaching mechanism of the device should not hit the user. The device also needs to reach above, below, and at the same level as the user, so it should have a length of extension of about two meters. The device also needs to mount to the endurance power chair, which is the wheelchair that Thomas uses, a 24-volt system. And with that, we have to consider the different environments that the wheelchair may be in. One of Thomas's main goals with his foundation is to help people with disabilities leave their homes more. We have to consider environments and different objects in public as well as in someone's home. The device needs to be easy to control, so it should be not require significant force to operate. It must be modular so it can be adapted to different customers who may use it for different needs. And the cost also must be affordable and the parts should be accessible for someone who is an engineer to build it. So far, we've um, broken our design into five different systems. So we have the grasper system, which uh, takes care of the interaction between our device and the object we want to move around. Uh, we have the reaching system, which uh, moves the grasper around in space. Uh, we have the mounting system, which uh, handles um, how the uh, device is uh, secured uh, to whatever base it, it needs to be secured on. In our case, we're focusing on how the device is onto the uh, endurance power chair. We also have the human interface, which, um, which allows the user to control the device. And we have the control system, which determines how each of the device components interact with the other components. All right, so um, we have a pretty decent idea of where to start with the grasper. Uh, so first we need to determine, uh, we, we've decided that a uh, mechanical gripper system would be most appropriate for this project. And um, first we have to determine how many claws we want to use for this system. And to do that, we're going to be making a scrappy DIY model, sort of like uh, what you see in the Science Buddies image. And after we determine the number of claws, we're going to be building a more functional prototype. And this prototype will be used to determine the uh, mechanisms behind the uh, the uh, final uh, design that would work well with it. Um, what this prototype might look like would be something similar to the Smith image. Uh, the reach human interface and control systems, we're still working out. Uh, for the reach system, um, we need to determine the number of uh, degree, degrees of freedom that are um, ideal for uh, the minimum number of degrees of freedom for robotic motion. And we need to associate these degrees of freedoms with uh, appropriate mechanical joints. For the human interface system, uh, we've decided that we could we could probably use control, a controller for this just to get started because all of us are familiar with controllers and there are open source frameworks for programming controllers like uh, QMK and also a lot of controllers are Raspberry Pi based. And the control system. This is the uh, component that we know the least about. Uh, and because we know the least about it, we're going to be using uh, references um, as we uh, work on our designs to, something like uh, Modern Robotics by Lynch and Park. And um, looking into this, we've also found that there are code frameworks that help us with robotic programming, something like uh, ROS, and, which stands for Robot Operating System. And there are also um, simulation tools to help us uh, simulate robotic programs um, before we actually implement them into a physical design. 
Oh. All right. Looking ahead at our roadmap for the next few months, uh, starting from now until about early January, we're yeah. going to be plan out, planning out our design alternatives as well as building up some skills that we need. For example, with the robotic op, um, motion planning. Uh, and then also we'll be exploring the literature. Uh, we have a pretty good feel for what kinds of needs our various users may need. Um, but we want to make sure that we've found examples of how people have solved similar problems in the past that we know how to build off of their experiences. Moving towards mid-January to early February, we're going to be evaluating our design alternatives as well as uh, sourcing some parts. Well, we expect that most of our design components um, for building the actual design will come from a hardware store, sort of in line with the needs of open hardware where everything is accessible. Uh, we also have a need to make sure that we're not going to be surprised by anything that's difficult to source later on in the semester. Uh, during this time, we're also going to be getting a round of customer feedback, um, as this is sort of the inflection point in our design process between evaluating a very broad field of uh, possible options and transitioning into just one design that we're going to go with for the rest of the project. Moving into mid-February to mid-March, we'll be assessing the, uh, or sorry, assembling the individual subsystems as well as designing our user interface. And during this time, we'll also be considering how to make the subsystems interface with each other as they don't exist in a vacuum. Um, moving into late March and early May, that's where we will assemble our final design and put everything together from the individual subsystems. During this time, we'll also spend a lot of time on testing and quality control, as well as receiving a final round of user feedback, um, as we want to make sure that our device is really polished and really meets the needs of our users. Uh, taking a look at our budget, our total is about $550 for estimated costs, with about $20 of that going towards prototyping materials. Um, so that'll be like arts and crafts materials for concept designs, as well as uh, we're intending to use some like paper and cardboard that we can access um, without any cost. We also have about $450 going to design components, definitely the biggest portion in our budget. Um, that'll be for things like hardware, uh, the individual like electronic components, controllers, things of that nature, uh, everything that's going into our actual final prototype. And finally, we have about $80 set aside for services and machining, um, just so that we have that money set aside when we need to machine various parts. Um, although we are hoping to keep that in to a minimum so that it's easy for others without technical background to recreate our design. Um, this brings us to a total of about $550 in estimated cost, uh, leaving us with about a $50 leeway for unexpected costs that we're able to adjust as needed. Looking forward for the coming months, uh, we're going to be very much keeping in mind that our ultimate goal is to support user independence. Um, so that will come into play every step of the way, whether it's designing between our various design alternatives um, or whether it's polishing our final design. Uh, our coming steps will be to design our, or like uh, assess our various design alternatives so that we can really select the right path, as well as to build up skills so that moving into next semester, uh, we're prepared to fully hit the ground running. Um, thank you all for your time, and we're looking forward to presenting our final project. Thank you. I know uh, Thomas is in the uh, uh, Zoom room, so if there's any questions from there, just unmute and ask away. Uh, yeah, Mark. Um, really nice job. You, you, you said a couple things. You said um, that based on your prototype, you're going to determine how many crossers or fingers you know, you're going to need. And you also said you're going to later determine how many degrees of freedom you need. And I wonder what the the criteria we're going to use. Yeah, so we're not really too sure. Oh, yeah. We're not really too sure about uh, what the criteria that still for those are. While we expect that maybe the robotics textbook would provide some insight about it. If not, then we'll probably uh, look into it. Um, but first, since we already have an idea of what we're going to be doing for the grasper, we thought we'd start with that and then work with the other systems afterwards. Um, the entire uh, design has to be modular anyway, so I think that works out. Okay. Um, from our customer, what we've heard is that his current like a uh, grasping system with like a kind of like a claw that you um squeeze to to tighten the grippers, uh, just has like two points of contact, and that's not quite enough. Um, so he suggested using more, and we're going to need to figure out how many points of contact are sufficient for like a really stable connection to whatever we're grabbing. And then for the degrees of freedom, we've heard that uh, 
it should be able to grab something that's like up above your head all the way to the ground. Um, and so as we design this, we're going to need to figure out really what the requirements are to be able to get to all of those points from the like the back of a wheelchair where it's mounted. Are you going to assume that wheelchair is stationary? Because if you you can move the wheelchair, then you need fewer degrees of freedom for the object. If the wheelchair is kind of stuck at a point, then you need more. Um, it'll kind of be a mix of the two because it does have to reach around and avoid like hitting the person sitting in the wheelchair. Um, but it definitely won't need to reach like directly behind because you can rotate it. Can you put a little, a little bit more of a fence around the types of behaviors you want this thing to do? For example, uh, you mentioned a couple of times lifting a jug of water for the purpose of giving it to the wheelchair user. How about peeling an orange? Is it going to peel an orange or rotate a screwdriver? To, I, I would imagine not. But uh, what types of behaviors are you throwing into your, it would be great if it does this. And what are you throwing into the, we're not even going to try that category. So we're still thinking about that. Uh, the screwdriver thing, probably not. That seems pretty complicated. Um, maybe opening a door that that could be included. Uh, yeah, I think our design should be capable of opening a door. Uh, Mr. Quieter did give us some guidelines, which is uh, he wants us to reach um, something that's directly in front, something that's on the ground, and something that's on a high shelf. <laughs> uh, so that's the guidelines we're going by. And we also got guidelines from the vice president, uh, Matt Lacey, which is the device should work between um, four inches from the back of the wheelchair all the way forward to 72 inches, um, mm -hmm. which is around like two meters. So we're going to attempt to follow those as well. So it's just to follow up, it feels like most of your things are bringing stuff to the user, but also maybe every now and again, opening a doorknob. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just moving stuff around. This has a question. Sure. Thomas, just unmute and ask. Uh, or uh, if you type it, we can read it for you. But either way is fine. Thomas, we're not hearing you. You you, you might have the uh, microphone setting wrong. Yeah, my, my microphone was on mute. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Fine. Thanks. All right. So um, in terms of all the questions that have been asked of the students, it's open hardware. Um what they're creating will be a base that becomes whatever the users need it to be. Um, so in terms of using a screwdriver, uh, because it's modular and modifiable and open to hardware, that can be done later on. Uh, this is really the, the get-go startup of what a um, reaching device can do for someone. Mm -hmm. We kept it simple to keep the project applicable. Um, <laughs> however, I, I do have a question for the students, um, and it's one that I like to ask all of our teams. What made you choose our product or our project? Um, I can start and then we'll we'll pass the microphone through everyone. The thing that really drew me to this project, first of all, was that it's a really great opportunity to help people because um, sort of this isn't anything super complicated, but it makes such a difference for someone that needs it. Um, and the current uh, options really are, are kind of lacking because either you have something that's um, completely insufficient, or it's like a really expensive device that you have to manage like the bureaucracy of insurance. Um, so first of all, it's a great way to help people. And then secondly, I really appreciate the open hardware aspect. Um, I've done a lot of work with like using open source code. Um, so I think it's really great to apply that to hardware. Yeah, we, we kind of have to move on. Can do any of, does anybody have anything real particular to add to that? Sorry about that, Thomas. Anyway, okay. Thank you very much.